Got it. Welcome to Binary Jazz. This <laughs> is a podcast about things with people. It's about things no, it's with about people. people. It's, with not, things. it's not about things with people. It's about people things. With things. It is it is about it is with people about things. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we got off the rails already. Um, I don't know this wee stuff, man. You're on your own. <laughs> also, uh, oh no, a cliff. This is a. Uh, this is a. Uh, yeah, I'm here with my with my friends, uh, Gary uh, and Allison, and I'm Chris, and we're binary Gary, uh, Allison Plus, and Jazz Sequence on the internet, uh, and uh, we're binary Jazz on the internet at binary Jazz, binary Jazz dot us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can ask us questions. Uh, nobody does, but you can. Um, and we will answer them. You say that, that and people all. are like, oh, yeah, ask questions. And by the end of the episode, they're like, fuck, uh, why bother? <laughs> you, can, you can ask questions at the beginning of it. You don't need to finish the episode to ask a question. You can ask a question at any time. If you have questions, you should ask them now. Uh, we do have a binary talk. jazz contact. It's a you YouTube video from Rochelle Butts. Um, no, but it's a U- yeah, it's not B U T T S. It's B U T Z. Oh, Hold on, I have to look up the name of some idiot running for uh, Congress. But, or but something. But uh, I'm not going to click the link because I think that it might. Well, I'll click it later, but I will make sure that it isn't an incognito window. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good call. <laughs> This uh, commercial I happened to see yesterday for Ted Bud. Ted Bud. I lost sight. That's what I thought, but it's Ted Bud, double D. Mm. Bud. Uh, which That's was Theodore why I Bud to you. To. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, he goes by Ted because he is running for uh, Congress. Uh, uh, in the uh, in the grand tradition of other Ted's, awful, awful North Carolina Republican Congress people. I mean, like. The commercial started, and it was like. Uh, was there a, was there a rifle uh, in the first ten seconds oh, God, of yes. that? Yes. Oh okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a thirty second commercial. I don't think we made it ten seconds before there was a rifle. Excellent. Uh, we hit all the all the checkpoints. Uh, <laughs> high gas prices, uh, border, right? Um, uh, culture war, uh, gun control. Oh, and the worst president of all time. Yeah, I mean, in like thirty seconds, it was it was baffling. The worst uh, president of all time, and he wasn't speaking of Donald Trump. No, it was um it was Millard no. Fillmore. Yeah. <laughs> was it Millard Fillmore? Well, what can you imagine? I should I should start my own congressional campaign here and uh why not and just call it like weird historical stuff. Yeah. I no, I don't have time for that crap. And I don't have any interest to entertain conversations with my constituents. I could see you being on like a city council. That's how it's. That's the. That's the gateway drug. Yeah. That's the gateway. Drug. Be like the person that would show up. With gateway like drug to politics. A city council. Bowl of uh, I thought it was word camps. And milk and sit there <laughs> and eat. Eating my frosted mini week while someone carries on about something stupid. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the one thing. The one thing. one thing. The one thing. Just one. I. I do. There are a lot of. Ah, oh, damn it! I'm gonna have to Google and see what. There's a lot of odd damn it. Council. There's a lot of it, people in the city that I have uh, a lot of empathy for, who have been like, you know, given a raw deal. Wow, mm-hmm. I even sound like a politician. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Let it me just Google deal. this right. Let me get this out of the way. Right. Uh, you can keep going on. No, we definitely want to hear the engaging content of Gary doing a search on his laptop. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, like the music. Do 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 do
I, it's like maybe even six months residency. I don't think that there's there's a you're definitely it's eligible. probably just you own a home in the zip. Code. That's probably true. Yeah, <laughs> it probably doesn't even require residency. Yeah, I'm too late for this year, though. I think. I think you have a lot on your plate. I always do. And that's that's a that's a good. I have excuse. a styrofoam plate. It's like a lot, like the six or the five compartments that are on it. You have to keep it separate. <laughs> Want that stuff to mingle? Yeah, I, no, that's not true. That's not true. I do often have a lot um, uh, on my plate, but uh, more and more, I'm like, nope, don't want that. So. Well, uh, the way that this often works. <laughs> what a thrilling intro! My bad. Isn't it? Yeah, that's on me. I'll, it's look, it's been a while. We're all just doing the best we can. <laughs> it's it's been a while. Um, it hasn't been a while. It's been two weeks. It's been a while. And you forgot what? after one hundred and sixty thousand episodes or whatever how we do this. Yeah, well, that was a, accusatory. I didn't mean it. No, I mean I, I, didn't, I, I didn't mean I think to like. I think it's been a while. No, I didn't mean it that way. And that sounded I think, rude. I think it's been a while, and therefore our intro is a little off kilter, perhaps. Well, I do have a topic. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was gonna I was gonna get into that. So the way this typically works is uh, uh, Allison brings us a topic that Gary and I have not heard or know about or have we have not discussed this pri previously, and then we uh, see if we know what the topic is under what it means the the existential uh, I don't know. Gary, uh, I heard that sigh. Okay. What's that? I don't think it was inaudible. And, and, and if we don't know what it is, then we bullshit until we are told what it is. That's that's how it works. I might know this one. I say that every week. Yeah, you say that every week. <laughs> Sometimes we do, but... Um. I do appreciate how much faith you have in us. And then... I don't know why. This one have, feels like... This one feels... Feels like it has potential. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, sing master notation. Sing master. Sing master. Sing master. One sing word. master, one word. Sing, like I'm singing. Yep. Kantara. Exactly what you would think. <laughs> sing master notation. Gary's oh, mad at me right now. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And I feel like I can describe this thing having no idea what it is. Um, uh, and probably be completely wrong. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. Um, sing master notation is a way of showing the, um, it's for music, obviously. And it is a way of showing um, the, like the, the way the, the melody flows without having to um, use like a staff. So whatever the root tone you start with is as a group, then the sing master notation uses that as the bass and, or the root of the entire piece and shows how all of the parts would move uh, in relation to that note up and down all the way through uh, without having to uh, take into account key signature. Yes. Uh, I guess our work is done here. <laughs> I, I was going to say I'm so that, confident that that's correct, that like I will not entertain any other answer. I, I was going to say that Singmaster, Singmaster is, is a piece of software. Mm -hmm. And sing master notation is the specific uh, 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 musical notation that sing, the sing master software creates. It's a really uses, boring definition. It uses Comic Sans, but I mean, face. but it's 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 like you know, it's one of those uh, one of those music sheet music uh, sort of apps, and and called Sing Master, and and the Sing Master note. It's just this particular style of of writing music. So it's like a Garage Band competitor. <laughs> Well, GarageBand doesn't give you Notate, shit music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it can. It can these days. Can yeah. It? If you do the oh. piano score, yeah, you can Fancy. convert that to really. Score to wow. piano. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'm an expert in GarageBand. Apparently, I yeah. don't have that <laughs> no, computer. Like, haven't used it in years, but I do know that you can pull out um, both a MIDI file and a, create a PDF of the um, like a MIDI score. Hmm. Um, That's really cool. But I would I would kick that over to uh, an app called MuseScore, which was like a open source version of Finale, but apparently there was some big stink like a year or two ago with MuseScore. I'm not sure what it was, but I wasn't really actively writing or transposing or doing anything weird with instruments that would require like a musical score. Uh, 
So I don't know what yeah, I'm now. There, but there's, I a, there's a Twitter store, account. A there's a Twitter account that I follow. There's a few of them. Uh, which is like now I need to find it I, to get it <sighs> right. It's like um, who am I following? Uh, threatening music notation. Oh gosh, yes, I've seen that and I love it. And and there is a lot of stuff. So one of the things that that comes up a lot in going through the the history of of uh, threatening music notation is that there is a particular app that a lot of people are using. That's also like a social app. And so like some of these threatening musical notation musical scores will have will be coming from this app specifically, um, which is good because then like particularly when it's like something super chaotic, then you can actually go there and it'll play it for you. Oh. When you find it's chaotic, like can you just not you can't sing it in your head and that's why you go to uh, I mean it? like it's a page full of notes that don't really have meter or time signature at all, They're just sort of overlaid on top of each other and it's just like <laughs> Why would you want that? Uh because it's fun to look at, I guess. I don't know. This is chaotic good. Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, like chaotic neutral, but okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there's yeah. For example, uh, there is a threatening music notation uh, snippet here uh, from six hours ago today, uh, where it has uh, a forte to I don't know the three forte uh, version. It's not full forte. It's some full fullest Fortissimo. full. Fortissimo. Great. Uh, and it says in, the notation is just go, just go Do full it. ape mode from here onwards. Okay. <laughs> so it like it crescendos into Fortissimo and, then you, full, then you go full, then you go full ape. Silly. Uh, and then there is a, a video uh, of, of said. I need a, that on a t-shirt. I, I no longer care for this. No, no, I no longer, longer care, care for this. For this. <laughs> I would wear a purple shirt that said that in black text in Comic Sans. That's not very accessibility friendly. <laughs> I think if somebody were close enough to read my shirt. Anyway, yeah, but like, like tiny right here. <laughs> it's like... And underneath in the even tinier font it says go away. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Right there with you. Uh, I can I can definitely uh, vouch for threatening music notation though it's it's great and what's also good about threatening music notation is just a whole bunch of like threatening music notation uh, fan accounts really? that will wow. that will like that will like troll threatening music notation. So there's one that's called threatening threatening music notation, and then there's one called like romancing threatening mu music notation, music and like, <laughs> and then there's another one that's threatening 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 music notation. <laughs> Oh come so, on! <laughs> so it's it's threatening to the threatening, threatening one. Threatening, yeah. It. <laughs> Humans have so much time on their hands. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. And this is why we don't need to work nine to five. Yeah. Uh, right. So, um, uh, we were talking about, uh, 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 not vermilion borders. That was last week. Uh, sing master. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just, you know what it is. Uh, I sing do, master, I it. <laughs> <laughs> sing master is, is a, uh, circa 1950s, uh, like machine. Um, uh, it, basically a microphone. God, I think you're right. B basically a microphone. Uh, but it was called a sing master because everything from the 1950s was called something master. Um, it was like a player piano. You sure. Yeah. You put it in um, reels. Yeah. And you could and, write sing master notation, which were printed. It was like a uh, oh. um, punch card system. You mean. Do you have punch cards? What's happening? <laughs> Dear listener, Chris is doing something in the background and we don't to know go on what it eBay is currently. And some punch cards to put on my wall. eBay.com. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Dear listener, Chris has now dropped something on the floor. I want some punch cards. Whoa. I want, I want some that are punched though. Wow. 
Welcome to the ASMR. <laughs> Chris unwrapping things. Next Wait, yeah, what do you have? Is that, that's punch tape. That's ticker tape? Oh no, that's this has nothing to do with. It's so whimsical, it hurts. <laughs> Can I make a, um... The Wes Anderson episode of the pod. <laughs> oh, no, we made, we need a much better, like, camera angle for that, I think. Or at least I do. Um, uh, can I recommend a, a, a show on Netflix, if you've not seen it? Um, is a show called Magic for Humans. Uh, and I can't remember the magician's name. Uh, and I can't remember the episode. But there's one episode where his, uh, his mother um, died of Alzheimer's and... Uh, he does this episode where he's like talking to her and he's talking about this concert that they went to and she liked the song. It was Jason Mraz and it's like the song I'm yours. And he had the tickets, her ticket, his ticket. And he like magic them back together and then like hole punched them and played them through like a little player like that. And it played I'm yours. And his mom was singing along with it. And it was uh, just the most adorable thing, like in the midst of like, you know, silly magic tricks. And it was lovely yeah. and uh, just a piece of humanity right there. So that that is a little musicy box, but it has puncher tape, and you're talking about uh, punch tape, and so sing yeah. master. Okay. Well, however, this is called a musicale. Or at least that's what it says on the little. It's a brand name. It's like the difference between yeah. Kleenex and tissue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you look inside, and it just get a little adorable. You know, yeah, metal reeds of different lengths, and I love mm. that system. I did not make it. It was a gift, um, but it comes not on with, your birthday. Even that's the funny part. It was just from a while ago. Uh, it comes with uh, some tape, and the idea was that you can punch your own yeah. music, uh, which I have not done. That feels like a lot of pressure. It does. Yeah. It's especially since it's like it's a physical thing, and I feel like whatever it is that I decide to put on one of these, it should be good. <laughs> No, That's, it's that was the story, by Radiohead. Of, story of my childhood life is getting really cool craft kits or DIY things and then never using them because mm, the, there no. was too much pressure. What if I did but what's it interesting? Uh, what's interesting about this system is if you look at the happy birthday thing, the happy birthday thing that I just played, yeah. um, it actually has, I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah. It actually has like notation on it and the the uh staffs and stuff so it, it does actually align with a standard uh musical scale okay so yeah i want you to play creep next week nope it's i did like i did i song did song you have to cover on every instrument i did have uh i did have a thought of like putting um the end of uh is it closer uh, that at the end goes doom, 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 doom. Yeah, I think closer. Du, 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 du. I was thinking that that would be the, the creepiest thing I could put on this, but it's probably many other things like, that are creepier that I could I put think on. a lot of things will sound creepy on that. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear that by chance? What was it? Rhonda has been practicing French horn recently. Uh, she hasn't played for like 20 years. Wow, that's a big uh, deal. I like, it make, oh, it just I makes me so whispering happy. now. <laughs> I, I know. I don't know why I'm whispering. I just don't want to like break the the vibe. I'm just. If I go really slow. Maybe this will be. Can you play upside down? Uh, maybe. Why are we not doing that? Um, why are we not doing that? Well, now that it's in, I can't take it out without playing through the whole thing again. Do 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 do. -do. Yeah, too fast is creepy, are we, and too slow is creepy as well. <laughs> are we going to get DRM'd for this? No, or this not is DRM'd? not free. Oh, yeah. I don't think it is. I think that there's a license on it. That's why you don't hear it on TV shows, right? Happy birthday? Oh. You can you Google happy birthday, and you'll have a million people, or or, or uh, look, search on, um, search on uh, YouTube for happy birthday, and you'll have a million. Uh, oh, it is adults. in the public domain. Yeah. 
it was declared invalid in 2015. So I'm not wrong because before 2015, you had yes, it was a you couldn't use it in like television shows and stuff. But now it's free range, baby. Kind of a nice. prefer it <laughs> i think i do too so glad we're doing this experiment wait is that backwards yeah can you flip the tape over after this and play it forwards but upside down thank you Yeah, that played all the nice notes. Need need to play the the. That's why I think upside down is gonna be really like dissonant and interesting. And maybe not dissonant because the interval should still be reasonable, but maybe minor. This should be this should be fascinating. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be minor though. It's all it's all major keys. Yeah, this just feels like a little unresolved. Well, for my okay, next well, birthday, I'll just request that everybody sing it backwards. <laughs> yes. But bring cheesecake. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on down there. Can you hear that? No? Nope. Wow. Lab children, French horn. So uh, that's the sing master, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a sing master. That's what a sing master would sound like. It's a knockoff sing master. Um, knock well, what I was thinking was that it would be like one of those stupid, like fake, like I don't know. It would be a toy now, right? But in in like the fifties, it would be like latest technology. But it's like, like uh, basically, basically just a microphone that has its own sort of built-in like amplifier, but it doesn't actually plug into anything. It's just sort of like a, like a yeah, it's a sing master. It's 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 what you would do for uh, for you know karaoke in the in if you did karaoke in in 1956. <laughs> but you would have to like wax your mustache first. Um, sure. You said what year? 19 what? I said 56. Yeah. yeah. Famously, it wasn't until 58 when women were allowed to karaoke places. <laughs> so. How funny, would, how funny would that timeline be if karaoke was a thing back in the 50s? They're like, we're just getting started, but this seems like a good idea. The little catalog for karaoke would be like 10 songs. It would literally be like uh, the, um, is it Victrola, like records? Mm -hmm. They just have like the title like across the top. It, it was just, you know, everybody knew the words because, I mean, it wasn't that big of a catalog. <laughs> Sing Master Notation. Yeah, yeah. Sing master notation. I'll tell you what it is. Yeah, I, I don't know that we have a lot. Like, I feel like we're 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 coming up to the the end of our our oh. brains for sing master notation. The end of our brains. Oh, it's like the end of the sidewalk. Um, so sing master notation is named for David Singmaster. <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. Love not a person named Singmaster. Music, it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, keep going. He's a mathematician. And oh, great. Yes. That's even worse. <laughs> with a bunch of things, but he's he's also known for Singmaster notation, which is the notation he came up with in the 70s. 
70s for how to solve a Rubik's cube. Um, yeah. So like, it's like F1 means this block and blah, 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 like all the different um, things and no one had really ever done it. And he wrote a little pamphlet book that was the first published. Oh, we might even have that book. Yeah. Cause we this have a really a old. Book. And he looks uh-huh. exactly like you would want him to. Um, <laughs> that's I, I don't Over know. Like, aviator frames. I, I'm going to drop it in the chat so you can all see his Wikipedia yes. page. Um, yep. That's what I was hoping for. Look how but happy he looks he is. exactly like you would want someone who was in the <laughs> world to, to look like I was like I would like a math teacher that looks like this <laughs> oh um, yeah, yeah for sure that's a person that gets you excited about whatever they're teaching yeah like this never loses like the joy I'm like you're how are you so sparkly when you teach math <laughs> right right So, uh, (laughs) I've been trying to, to, uh, to, uh, add some, some final, some final stuff, uh, into, (laughs) into the podcast. Um, and, uh, and since we don't get questions, I I feel like we should still answer questions to encourage people to send us questions because, you know, that, that way. So um, this comes from a list of uh, stupidest questions submitted uh, people asked in Quora. There's a bunch of them. Uh, but what I wanted to ask... I'm gonna submit. Questions. There's a bunch of these. There's a bunch of these uh, that are really good, but this was one that I think that we could that we could probably answer. Uh, you would think that the pain of this one would be enough to spur me forth to like writing questions onto our it, website. Yeah, you'd be wrong. get on it. Come on. <laughs> you'd be wrong. Um, this th- this one, I, I do think that that we that we could probably uh, uh, address this particular question. It's it's um, during airplane turbulence. That's the question. No. Okay. During... I always have to check and be sure because you've dropped those before. <laughs> right. Yep. The answer's yes. <laughs> airplane turbulence? Yep. Yes. True. <laughs> Absolutely. During airplane turbulence. Yeah. How how do how do atheists how do atheists keep calm? They don't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Like, it has nothing to do whether you believe in something. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> I, I actually think my answer is uh, science. Like, yeah. understanding, like, you know, this machine is built actually to stay in the air. The turbulence is just what the air is do, happens to be doing outside. But that's, I need that's to probably how you stay calm. Yeah, I, 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 I want to be generally... sitting next to Gary during turbulence. <laughs> We, we, I think we were set to record on a Friday, the Friday that I took my ill-flated, 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 ill-fated flight. I did not die. I'll cut to the chase. Um, I took uh, my ill-fated flight where the um, engine was like leaking oil oh, under the windshield yeah. and we had to put down early. And uh, I was like, I can't record. I'm sick to my stomach. So perhaps that's not a good example of... Um, we had oh, well, really yeah. bad turbulence one flight and I was so convinced that I was like, this is the worst turbulence I've ever been in. And I, then I was just like, what do I do? I do nothing, but continue to listen to my music. And then I was yeah. like, but what do I want to be listening to mm-hmm. when we finally go? And then, so I was curating, curating, yeah. <laughs> curating a, a plane is crashing playlist. And I was like, I can't just be listening to a podcast. Like I gotta be listening to something that's like meaningful or like, Oh, j- <laughs> I have not so that curated plane... my own deaths by airplane uh, playlist. Yeah, I'm uh, the worst person to travel with, <laughs> FYI. That plane, before it was leaking oil, like about, I, I didn't know this at the time, before it was leaking oil, like three weeks earlier, they had they were in flight and ended up having to put it down in a field because mm-hmm. um, of like a missing cylinder. I mean, the cylinder was there, it just wasn't firing. Um, and... Uh, I was like making my hand like this, like everybody knows like what a cylinder looks like in an airplane, but I, it turns out I don't. So I, I don't, <laughs> it's just like this thing, I guess, with these drums, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that, so I, I learned that after the fact. And then two days later, I was supposed to get a flight 
back in that same plane from Tampa to Jacksonville. And we got up above the clouds and it started making that noise again. Mm. And the pilot and co-pilot were like, nope. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good with nope. Good with nope. Yeah, I'm, good with nope. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all about trusting the experts. <laughs> well, and then we got like, they're, we're coming down below cloud cover and they're like, keep your eyes peeled because we need to find the runway so we can get back. So everybody like, you know, help us find the runway when we get back below the clouds. Wow, this is intense. I mean, it's like, a, I mean, it's like, it's smaller than my car, honestly. And I've got like a little Toyota Matrix. So it's, it's tiny, it's tiny, tiny. Yeah, it really is like less volume than the car internally. It's fun to go up in. Every little like gust of wind, like a bird burps and you're like, wee. You know? <laughs> I like how uh, in the video, on Gary's video, as he did the wee, uh, as if the bird burped and, uh, and shook the plane, the whole, his whole camera also shook because his laptop is presumably on his lap. Uh, so that, that was an excellent addition to, uh, to that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Gary. Um, I, I will, I will, I'll read one more from this list. Cause that one was, you know, pretty good. Um, this is, this is an important one. Right? To the park. And I said, can you take the kids too? This is this, what? Rhonda said, I'm taking the critters to the park. I said, can you take the kids too? Yeah. Yeah. That's not a, that's not a question that, that, that is, uh, for the, for the, for the wider audience. Um, uh, this, this is a good one uh, for, for the wider audience. Uh, I think that there's a lot of, of uh, the, some target <laughs> demographics that we might be covering by this particular question. Um, it says, uh, I want to be a good, yep. polite vampire. From where should I start? Uh, blood banks. <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> I feel like that's pretty succinct, right? I, I, yeah, I, I think, I think that the, the, the crux of this question is, is like, you want to be poli a polite vampire, uh, so asking, yeah, permission, consent. yeah, co important. consent is, is probably like the, the baseline, uh, there. If you want to be good and polite, then, then and there are totally ask. people out there that are into it, so yeah, yeah. pretty much, it. pretty much, just ask. Yeah. Yeah. For all the vampires that, that listen to this uh, podcast. Yeah. Uh, For beginning, beginning, starters. Start, starting, yeah. Babies. Starting out vampiring. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Gary, you, you look like you have something you would like to share. <laughs> Gary's going to submit please, questions next please, week because he hates these. <laughs> please share with the group. <laughs> I'm the most easygoing person in the world. I don't know why I find this so frustrating. <laughs> I just like want to like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm having internet problems. Like shut my computer. <laughs> or just like I'm having internet problems and sit down and walk away. And how do you say he's having internet problems? The problem is I don't want to be on the internet right now. That's, That's my problem too. Enough. And But work is requiring me to be on the internet. So I, I don't, I don't want to be. I think the trick is to lean into it. If I'm being oh honest. yeah, let's just lean. Right. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Lean, lean well, as a woman, into I'm, the question. I'm told to lean in quite often. So. Yeah. <laughs> Why is everything so terrible? I don't know. Oh, we haven't had this episode in a while. Where I, I oh, good. How terrible, everything is. Well, and we've yeah, got one of the stuff to do it. Now for the segment, sure. everything is terrible. Is there are there silver linings that you're able to find in that everything is terrible? Yeah, I mean, yes, there are. Yes, there are. Yesterday, Charlotte was singing um, uh, the ants go marching one by one, and she could only remember the first one, first verse. So the little one stops to suck his thumb, and then she couldn't remember hang, whatever whatever came after that. She would just go boom, 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 boom. <laughs> The ants go marching one by one. <laughs> and, and it was the most adorable thing. And Ron and I just sat there on the couch, just listening. Like that's nice. It was it was just so lovely and tender and adorable. And she was just like coloring and just singing to herself and <laughs> like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and didn't resolve it and then would start the next word. It was just it's just magical. Just magical. There's a silver lining. Um I know that you all are not uh, meat eaters. Yesterday, I started with an entire chicken and in the morning, well, 
like sort of morning, uh, like a little before lunchtime and got all the way to um, like chicken and dumplings. So used the everything left over and made like chicken broth and dumplings and everything. So just like from scratch and like eating food from scratch that was previously like, here's some ingredients that together are just like, I don't know what I'd do with that. And like to have a, a meal come out of it is really uh, satisfying to eat with the family, even though half of them are like, nah, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, also, well, I also did, we did like a spinach and broccoli. Katie likes any vegetable with a lot of cheese on it. So, okay, that's legit. That's so did, Yeah, spinach and broccoli with like, I did like three kinds of cheese on it. And uh, that worked out really nicely too. And like the top layer of cheese got like that, like tiny bit of crust, light brown, uh, actually, I'm going to have that as a snack after we're done here. Um, so that's a silver lining uh, in the midst of. I. So I started watching a show on uh, Netflix. It's good that we've got one videos. minute and 50 seconds left right as, you, as you're launching into it. <laughs> yes. Well, it, not a show. It's a movie. Uh, and it's about um, the World Anti-Doping Agency and... Um, I can't actually remember the name of it, but there is a Russian scientist involved in it. And this was filmed back in like 2018, 2019. I have no idea why Netflix was like, based on the other crap you've watched, maybe you'll like this. I don't know. Uh, and so they threw <laughs> this one. I'm like, sure. So we made it like an hour into it last night. And um, right before the Olympics, when um, like the Russian uh, lab was shut down, this guy like who was working with this uh, U.S. cyclist who was trying to prove that all cyclists are, are blood doping and aren't caught. Um, uh, and I'm still kind of nursing a broken heart from the Lance Armstrong thing, honestly. Um, he, uh, uh, this guy like fled from Russia while they were shooting this documentary. And like the documentary changed from like this cyclist trying to like beat the doping system to like actually housing like someone who can't go back to Russia for fear of his life. And then I went to bed right then. Uh, and it's That's like not a good time to uh, to end a thing. Some sort of palate cleanser. Yeah, I did, but it was getting late, and I was like, I need, I have to finish this tomorrow. Um, it was late, like nine fifty five. Um, but <laughs> but but the whole undercurrent that I was viewing this through was like, like there wasn't any point where we didn't think like Russia was like a bunch of assholes, like in the last, you know, twenty years. So, oh, I guess I should. Oh, I guess I should couple this with. Um, uh, my uh, the CEO of my company does this podcast um, called Three Things. I'll actually share the link for this because I think I actually am bringing like a decent content to the show. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.